All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome Good back to the morning. CPCYA podcast. I feel weirdly tall, but this feels weirdly tall. Well, you are weirdly tall just in life. Am I? You're the, For Jackson. Because, like, <laughs> you're at a height where, like, you're tall, but, like. But there's taller. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like, if somebody asked me, is Grayson tall? I'd be like, yeah. But then it depends on who you're standing next to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? I guess that's true for all of us. Hi. So you preached last night? Who? You. Yep. I guess. I wasn't there. Grayson was sick. Yeah. Migraines. Are you feeling better? I feel good. My kid did not go to sleep until 2 a.m., though. Um, Last night, too? Yeah, last night at two. Yeah. This morning at two. This is becoming a recurring situation. <laughs> Event. <laughs> yes, and there was no sleep before that. Like the, my wife um, was out of town for a funeral, and they got back. Like, what time did the Chiefs game get over? I don't know. It was after after uh, we got done last night. Yeah, so I mean, it was after all yeah. that. So like, I was a little at, busy. It was after nine. That's fair. <laughs> it was after nine o'clock, so like they got home nine thirty, nine forty-five, and she was up from then till two yeah. in the morning. Wow. Well, we missed you. Yep. Not the same without you. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah, we did get to um, continue our message series. We've been in on the gospel, and we went into depth a little more about how. Um, And I thought that was important, especially to kind of wrap up the message portion of this series, because next week we're going to be doing uh, our groups and we're going to be discussing kind of what this series has been about. I thought this was a good way to kind of wrap it up because we talk so much about sharing the gospel and why it's important. And that's what we've been covering over the last couple of weeks. But one of the questions I get asked all the time when I talk to young adults about this stuff is, well, how do I do it? Like, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? Or what if I don't know, you know, an answer to a question they may have? Or what if I don't feel qualified to do this? What right. about all the junk going on in my life? What is what does that mean? And so it was, I felt like it was good to kind of deal with some of those some of those fears and some of those setbacks that we yeah. have when we're sharing the gospel with others. Yep. So last night you used uh, the main scripture that you used was out of John uh, chapter 9 where Jesus heals the blind man um by rubbing the mud over his eyes. Yep. Um and we're talking about how and it's kind of it, the, the 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 premise of that is kind of similar to what we talked about last week with the woman at the well as well, yeah. because the how was you knew where you were, and you know where you are now. Yep. And then you just tell people about that. You tell people about where Jesus brought you out of and where he has put you now yeah. in your life. And that is exactly what the, 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 the blind man did. Right. When the people were asking him, the religious leaders were asking him like, Hey, uh, you were blind you were begging for money and now you can see and you know where you're going right like, yeah this man <laughs> this man called jesus they're like nah yeah nah they're like no way yep. you're not the same guy and he's like let me tell you something yeah <laughs> <laughs> but i loved your first point and you really like dove into the um into the story of, of the man being blind right your first point was to remember the darkness yeah. Remember where you were. Remember where, again, like I said, where God pulled you out of. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah, I thought that was um, that was a great place to start in that message. You know, as I was kind of putting it together, is because, and I think I kind of said this in a way last night. Um, I think so often we forget about our past in a sense where. To some degree, yes, we need to move on from our past. We need Mm -hmm. to move out of that lifestyle. We need to become who God has really called us to be. But in doing that, I think we can't forget where God brought us from because that is a huge, important part of the story and and what he's done for us. And we can use those, those situations, even though they weren't great at the time. Yeah. 
You know, I, I remember my life before Jesus, and there was a lot of mess going on. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of hurt. Now I'm able to use the testimony of that yeah. to connect with people who are going through the same things, mm-hmm. similar things, and say, hey, listen, I, I get you. I know that that's, that's tough. I've been in that situation. I've been in that type of family drama. I've been in that type of loneliness. I've yeah. been in that type of addiction. I've been there. I get it. Let me tell you how we got out of that, though. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I can't I can't do that if I'm constantly downplaying my past, right? And 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 it reminds me of like when I first got saved, and I was in the the youth group I was in at the time. I felt I remember feeling very unqualified because at the time, especially, I was. And I don't mean this in a bad way at all, if you fit this description, but like I was surrounded by pastor's kids. Mm -hmm. Just there were so many pastor's kids and so many kids that had been in church their whole lives. And I just got here and I don't know anything. And I was just struggling with so-and-so a couple days, a couple weeks ago. You know what I mean? And so like I instantly felt like I was kind of behind everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I felt like my past and, and things that I had done made me dirty in comparison to these kids who were seemingly, at least in my head, the perfect little Christians. And over time, it really, I really learned to embrace like, no, this is, first of all, they're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Second of all, my past is part of what makes me who I am. It's what makes this story between me and Jesus unique. It's what makes it different and special. Mm -hmm. And now I get to, Talk to other people about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Grayson got to deal with that that exact thing, being surrounded by pastors' kids at on a different level. Um, with when, when he when he met his now wife, yeah. um, Grayson, I'm just curious how you felt in that, and how like how to, how did you feel interacting with with your wife and her sisters, um, really the entire family, knowing that knowing what you had just come out of not that long ago. Um. I mean, I'd say it was very weird. Um, it was a weird change of pace, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, Cause right, like you walk on eggshells, like, okay, this guy's a pastor, like I can't do anything, you know, like absolutely anything. Then you kind of find out like, he's still human, you know, he's yeah. still mm-hmm. a dude, you know, like still a guy. Um, yeah. And Hannah was the hardest one to figure out though. Like, obviously I was the closest to her, but it blew my mind that She's like, oh, I've pretty much always believed, and, you know, yeah. never done anything really. I mean, I did this once and, you know, didn't like it. Right. <laughs> never did it again. I was just like, okay, what else? You know? Yeah. Mm, I've struggled with this before. And I'm just like, okay. So <laughs> you have not done anything. <laughs> you know, to her, it's like she's probably, she thinks she's going to hell because of all this stuff she did. And I'm like, yeah. that's two things. Right. <laughs> um, so it made it hard for me to like open up at first and tell her like, well, here's what I've done, you know, just so you, you know, no, which it makes it very hard to do. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't want you to judge me for that, yeah. which it's obviously hard not to, but, um, it kind of blew her mind. Some right. of the stuff I've done, and, you know, witnessed and been around. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is that she gets to see the grace in you are now. Yeah. Yeah. That's you for know, sure. And, that, and, and to see, and now you guys have, a child together, you know, and yeah. the, and she knows that that child's being raised in a godly home, and she knows that you came from mm-hmm. what you were dealing with, and yeah. now you're here, and that that's incredible. That's an awesome story. I think the hardest thing for me in the beginning that I struggled with was just like I viewed her as the spiritual leader of the house. Mm-hmm. Even I say house, we were dating, but like that's just the terminology. The relationship, I know. yeah, yeah. Um, even maybe early in marriage, you know, I still think I did. Um, just because I'm like, she earned that. She deserved that. You know, like, um, she's been doing this. I just started doing this. Right. Um, so that was something I struggled with cause I knew like I was supposed to be, but I didn't know how to really get over that hump. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, I mean, I can see how equally yoked we are, I guess yeah. you could say, right. and how everything just happens. But in the beginning, that was definitely something I struggled with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Then you went into your second point. Um, of of your message and that was speak of the light and basically like your your entire message was was 
focusing on how to share the gospel, right? And I, I, I believe that you were focused on one aspect of that, and that's like sharing your testimony. Mm. And so we, we have to make sure when we are sharing our testimonies that we're not spending a ton of time talking about our past. And oh, like like yeah. you said last night, like I could put down this this many drinks at the bar. But like <laughs> like I said, we can't focus on on that. We can't focus on like our our testimony on all the bad things we did and say, but yeah. uh, but but Jesus, you know, yeah. I understand, I understand it. But we have to speak of the light as well. We have to speak right. of what Jesus did, how he transformed us into what we are now. Yes. Um, and I felt like that needed to be addressed because I think that we all, to a degree, struggle with this sometimes. But I think when we are telling the story of our lives, we tend to want to make ourselves the main character. Yes. And that's not how this works. Mm -hmm. My life did not change because of me. Right. I am not different because of me. Everything was messed up because of me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If anything, I'm the antagonist of the story, Mm -hmm. not the protagonist. I'm the one that was messing this whole thing up Mm -hmm. and not giving my life to Jesus. Right. And he's the one that stepped in and said, hey, son, there's a better way to do this, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that sometimes we, we make ourselves the hero of the story. Um, and sometimes it's not even consciously. Um, I, I had a a mentor one time that used to talk about, even when we read the Bible, you know, sometimes we, Mm -hmm. we kind of make ourselves identify with Mm. whoever came out on the right side of that thing. You know, we make ourselves the hero in the story Mm -hmm. when a lot of times we're really, we're Judas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times it's, we're not the ones that got it right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, um, it's, it's, it's something that I see a lot. I think it's, it's something we all struggle with. We all do. But, um, when we are sharing the gospel with others, when we're sharing our testimony, things like that, we always have to make sure that Jesus is at the center of it. Yes. Um, and we have to make sure I, I, that we don't put ourselves in a position that we don't, that we're not qualified to hold. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, I'm not the person that saves people. Right. I'm not, I can't do that. Like I'm a pastor. I love you. I'll do what I can to help you grow spiritually. Yeah. I am not the end all be all. Right. I'm going to point you to the one that is though. Yes. And that's, that's what our lives should be. And that's ultimately, um, it's ultimately what ultimately what this whole thing hinges on. Mm-hmm. That's what sharing the gospel is. Mm-hmm. Shining a light for others to see who Jesus is. Yes. This is not about me. This is not about look how great I am. This is not right. about look what I overcame. This is about look who Jesus is and what he did in my life. This is who I was before. Mm-hmm. This is who I am now. And that's the only difference. Yeah. I think a lot of times as as Christians and even as, as leaders in the church, we, we think that we are, we, like you said, we are the ones that are, that are saving them. Like if it weren't for me, like that person would still be a sinner Yeah, and that, that may be true to a sense, but what we ought to be focused on more is just pointing them to Jesus. Yeah. And, and on, on top of that too, when we have that right focus, it takes a lot of the pressure off of our shoulders. Yes. Because one thing that I also struggle with is if if someone's quote unquote not getting it, mm-hmm. I feel the the weight and the burden and the and the stress of that. I, right. I I'll be up at night like, what should I have done? What should I have said differently? Um, mm-hmm. Why aren't they getting it? What's happening? Why? And, I, and I'm yes. blaming myself for that. And the, the difference is I don't get the blame or the credit. Right. I my job is to tell other people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I cannot make people accept Jesus. I can't make you do it. Right. It is, it is my job to give you the opportunity Mm -hmm. to give you the chance to tell you the message. I can't, you can't force anybody to make it. It's like that old saying, they say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Right. I can, I can show if you're, if you're sitting here dying of thirst right now, yeah, I can put a cup of water in front of you. Mm -hmm. I cannot make you pick it up and drink it. Right. And if you choose to not drink it, that's not my fault. You know yes. what I mean? 
Yeah. So we we're, we're, we are to constantly be planting those seeds. We we can't we can't necessarily be the ones that that water that waters those seeds or that puts that put that seed in sunlight. Right. That 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 has to come from Jesus. We but we can be planting those seeds. Yeah, absolutely. It's about trusting him. Yes. Yes. And then you ended you ended the night um in a way that is similar to what you just said. Um tell of the experience, but I loved the extra point you had in there is you don't have to know it all. Yeah. Um, we, Thank God. That, that is, <laughs> that is something that I think we all feel like, this. Yeah. Yeah. like I, I get scared about that so many times because I'm, I'm not, I'm not necessarily a new Christian, but I also don't have like a ton of scriptures memorized. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm a worship leader, man. I can I can tell you all the songs. I got so many songs memorized, and and I I believe that many of them are based on scripture, but I don't necessarily know like a, I don't know a ton of scripture. And so when people when I get into those into those moments, um, I often find myself my, myself either like misquoting scripture or paraphrasing it, and then I'm like. Like where, the, where I get asked, where did that come from? It's like, where it's is in that there. in the Bible? I, went, I know it's I in there. I went to private school, like for grade school. Yeah. Um, and they were religious schools. So like we had to memorize memory verses, yep. all that kind of stuff. And my family was always like, you remember all these rap songs. How can you not just remember this? I, I was always like, if Lil Wayne would rap this to me, <laughs> I'd probably remember it. You know, man. <laughs> Oh, that, no, I mean, that, grade, that can grade. go into a whole other thing. Not why, wheezy like, rapping but the it's scriptures. so true, That's though, crazy. right? Like you remember every like <laughs> when I listened to rap, like I knew every word to every song all the time. Yeah, I but can this listen one to a sentence, song. I can't get it. I know? can listen mm-hmm. to a song that I haven't heard since middle school, and I still know still every know. word to it. Yeah, but yeah. you throw this one memory verse, and I'm just like, how am I going to know this by Friday? <laughs> right, <laughs> man. But I think it's um. I mean, listen. When I talk to people about this kind of stuff, that's the number one fear. Yeah. I, I I feel confident in saying that's the number one thing that people are the most scared of is like, I don't feel like I know enough. I don't feel like I have it. I don't feel like I have the answers. Or and, I don't even feel like I know enough to be saved or like, I don't, yeah. you know, so it holds them back from that as well. And it's like, it's like, listen, you don't have all the answers. Yeah. And that's okay, because mm-hmm. I don't have them all either, and you don't have them all either, and you don't have them no all one. either. But we are in a community for a reason, mm-hmm. you know. If if you don't know that answer, we can we can find you somebody that can help you with that. Yeah, you know. And and, and again, I, I said this last night. That's not an excuse to not grow. Right. You definitely need to be growing in your faith. Yes. Growing in your knowledge. Um. If you are out there and you're struggling with that and you're looking for some resources, let us know. We will do what we can to help you. There's a mm-hmm. lot of awesome things out there that can help you grow spiritually. I encourage you to stay in your word and things like that. But you're not going to know everything. Yeah. And, and and a lot of times, too, when when we um, share the gospel with people, sometimes you'll run into those people. I, I'm sure you guys have had experiences like this where it just almost becomes combative. They're just trying to find, yeah. well, what about this? And what about how come these things don't line up? And well, Okay. All right, that that stuff's gonna happen, and maybe yeah. you'll have an answer for some of that stuff. Maybe you won't. Yeah, to me, that is the scariest part. Yeah. If, if someone were to were to combat my my statements that I know that I know is truth with something that I may not know or that I yeah. may not know the answer for, but my, my my biggest fear is saying I don't know in that situation. Yeah, because I because I then then they'll leave proving their point, proving their point and, that that like that. They're pr- trying to prove that Jesus isn't real, that God isn't real, that you're 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 doing the wrong thing. That's so scary. To yeah, me. and I and I think that's a, a legitimate fear that a lot of people have. But in that moment, first of all, we have to be we have to stop being afraid to say I don't know. Right. I don't know is an acceptable answer to a question. Yeah. You know what would be worse is if you just made something up. Yeah. Or said something that's that's not scripture based that isn't mm-hmm. that isn't helpful to the situation, and now that person leaves more confused than they were. If you don't know, just tell them you don't know. You can tell them, hey, I I, I have no problem looking into that for you, and right. I'll come back later with an answer, or I'll go ask somebody. Mm-hmm. I may not know that right now. Here's what I do know. Sometimes it's okay for you to focus on what you know. Yeah, and 
nobody can like you can you can you can try to tell me Jesus isn't isn't real. Right. You can say that till you're blue in the face. What you can't do is take away every experience that I have had in the presence yeah. of God and what I've seen him accomplish in and through me and in and through others. The things that I've seen in and outside of church, you cannot tell me mm -hmm. those things didn't happen. You cannot tell me that I didn't walk through that situation with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Like you like that that'd be like if I if I was sitting here right now and I said I'm wearing a hoodie and y'all said, No, you're not. Yeah. You can say it. You are free to tell me that you don't think I'm wearing a hoodie, but mm -hmm. guess what? You're wrong because right. I am <laughs> and you can't like I'm the only person that can change change that and take this hoodie off. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, and it feels like a lot of times in those situations, it's like we almost it's like we almost give that other person too much power. Mm -hmm. If they challenge us, all of a sudden we start doubting what we saw happen, what we felt, what we know, and it's like that person doesn't have the power. To take something away from you just because they asked you some question that really doesn't even a lot of times it doesn't even have to do with what you're talking to right. them about, but it's just something they saw on TV and they're like, "Well, what, I, I heard this." Mm -hmm. Like you probably did, man, and we can we can talk about that at a later time. Yeah. Right now, let's worry about the basics. Right. Let's let's worry about do you know Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, we could we could we can debate the whatevers later on. There will be plenty of time for that. Yeah. Let's talk about what matters right now, though, in this moment. That's good. You know? That's good. That's good. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> well, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> that is all we've got. Next week at our Young Adult Worship Experience, we will be having small groups. Groups. Whoop, whoop. You need to come to that because it will be awesome. It is a great time for us to have deeper conversations about what we've been talking about at YA. It's also an awesome time to invite your friends. Um, if they feel a little intimidated about coming to an actual worship experience, this is a great chance for them to get to know some people, get to ask some questions. They get an overview of what we've been talking about this month, and then we dive into that. So come hang out with us. Bring your friends next week. 7 p.m. We'll see you at YA. See you there. Here.